Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In my last live stream, I had a couple people ask me how I go about building a client's network. So in this video, we're gonna build the client's network. We're gonna add the networks, the Wi-Fi networks, um, the access network, as well as the cameras. If you guys are new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks. And if you'd like to support the channel, we have an Amazon storefront and I'll put a link in the description below. So first off, we got this client through a inbound lead through YouTube. Sometimes we get them through Facebook and this is for a warehouse. So what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be hooking up a UDM Pro, a USW 24 Pro, which I don't have right now. So we're just gonna be using a USW, a USW 16 Lite PoE, which will be in their warehouse to power up all the Unify G4 bullet cameras. And then on the other side, we have a USW Pro 24 PoE, which we're still waiting to ship, but we could at least get the base network set up. And we're gonna be installing Unify Access at this site. So here are the networks that we're gonna be creating and they're all gonna be slash 24. So we're gonna have management, we're gonna have staff, guest, IOT, cameras, warehouse, and Unify access. So the first thing we need to get set up is the UDM Pro and it's plugged into my internet connection right now, which is a static connection, but we'll go up to a web browser and type in 192.168.1.1. Now it's bringing us to our new UDM Pro. So here it's waiting for an internet connection and it's not gonna find one as I have a static IP address at the client site. They have DHCP, so it will hook up right away. But for now, we're gonna to go to advanced options. And then we're gonna select our connection type. For me, it's gonna be a static, but if you have PPPoE, that's what you're gonna select. So I'll select static. Now you could choose which WAN interface you wanna use. If you wanna just use the copper WAN port, which is down here, or if you wanna use the SFP, which is up in the top right corner, we're just gonna use the WAN port and I'm gonna put in all of my IP addressing in the DNS and then press next. All right, now it's saying connecting to the internet, so we're just gonna have to wait and see if it picks up and then it will do a speed test. Okay, so it says internet connected, let's press next. So UI is committed to protecting your privacy. We're gonna not read that and then set up UDM Pro. UDM Pro name, I'm gonna switch all this when we get to the client's uh, warehouse, but I'll just call it UDM Warehouse. We're gonna agree to the terms and services and then press next. Here it's gonna say select a setup type. We're gonna press business and then it will ask us the business type. I'm just gonna specify other and we're just gonna say mid-size business and then press next. Here I'm gonna put in my Unify credentials as I'll be managing their network and then I'll press next. For the update schedule, we're gonna disable that and press next. Auto optimize, we're gonna turn off and press next. And now it's starting our speed test. At my house, I have a thousand by about, I think it's about 50 upload and we're getting pretty close to that with the download speed. Okay, so now it's saying 937 by 57. We're gonna put in what they promised us. So we'll say 1000 by 50 and then we'll press next. And this is a review of all of our information and we'll press finish. One thing I don't show in this diagram is we're gonna be having Unify Nano HD spread across this warehouse, as well as a couple U6 long range. I don't have them as they were out of stock. So we're waiting on the back order to be filled, but we will create the wireless networks. All right, so now our UDM is set up and connected to the internet. Let's go into our network controller. And this is our dashboard of our UDM. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and create all those networks that are needed by the business. So I'll go to settings and I prefer using the classic settings. So that's what we'll check off. And we'll new user interface, we'll uncheck that and then we'll deactivate. Now it brings us back to the old dashboard. So we gotta go back to settings. And now we're gonna go over to networks. So under our LAN, this will be our management. So we're gonna click edit. And then we're just gonna recall it management. Scroll down and press save. The next network we need to create is our staff network. So we'll create a new network and we're gonna call it staff. And we're gonna give it a VLAN ID of 10. The IP subnet will be 192.168.10.1 slash 24 and we'll update the DHCP range and press save. Next, we need to do our guest network. So we'll create a new network and we'll call it guest. And that's gonna be VLAN 20 with an IP subnet range of 192.168.20.1 slash 24. And then we'll update the DHCP range and press save. Now we need to do IOT. That will be VLAN 30 with 192.168.30.1 slash 24. And then we'll update the DHCP range 
For these next couple ones, I'm just gonna speed through them. As you guys can see, it's pretty easy to do the networks and then we'll get creating the Wi-Fi networks. All right, now all of our networks are created. We need to go ahead and create the Wi-Fi networks. So we'll go up to wireless networks and we're gonna create a new wireless network. So the name and the SSID for this one will be management. And for the passwords, I'll just put in test1234 for all the wireless networks. And the network we're gonna select will be our management and then we'll press save. Now we need to create a staff Wi-Fi network. So we'll call it staff with the password of test1234. And the network will be staff and we'll press save. Then we need to do an IOT with the same password. And then we need to select the network, which is just the VLAN that we created of IOT and press save. Cameras and Unify Access doesn't need a Wi-Fi network. So the last Wi-Fi network that we're gonna create is Warehouse and then the network will be Warehouse and we'll press save. Now our networks and our Wi-Fi networks are created. We need to get our devices adopted. So right now we could only see that the UDM Pro is showing up. I do have a DAC cable running from the UDM Pro to the USW24 switch. Uh, just a reminder, we will be using a USW24 Pro, but for this one, I only have the one gig uplink. So sometimes there's an issue with the UDM Pros going between a 10 gig uplink and a one gig uplink where the other switch will not show up. So what we need to do, we need to put a copper connection between the UDM Pro and our 24 port switch for it to be able to show up. And then we need to hard code the speeds. So I'm gonna put this cable in between and we should see that switch show up in a minute. Okay, so now that we put that copper connection in, we could see that two switches are pending adoption. So our USW24 and our 16 Lite, which is plugged into the USW24. I'm gonna go ahead and adopt the 24 port switch first. And then we'll go ahead and we'll adopt the 16 PoE. Okay, now both switches have adopted. We need to go into the UDM ports and go to ethernet 10 and click the edit pencil. Here we need to do a profile override and we need to negotiate it to one gigabit. When I put these into the warehouse, this will be a 10 gigabit switch and it should just connect. But seeing as I have the USW24 and it's only one gig, it seems like there's a bug in the UDM Pro. So we'll press apply. And now just by doing that change, we could see on the UDM Pro that it's green on port 11. So we have an uplink with our SFPs. Let's go look at the switch. And now we could see that the switch SFP port is up, but it's in blocking state and that's due to spanning tree protocol. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take out the ethernet cable and then the DAC cable will be our uplink. So it's showing down right now, it is really up after we took that copper out. So we could ping 192.168.1.26, which is the switch, and we could see ping replies. All right, now we need to get all the cameras unboxed and plugged into our switch and get it adopted into our Protect controller. Um, this is gonna take a bit of time, so I'll just do a time-lapse video and we'll be back to get them adopted into our Protect controller. Now we have all our G4 bullets plugged into the USW Lite 16 PoE. We need to make these cameras go into the camera VLAN. So the first thing I'm gonna do is click on the switch. And then for all seven of these ports, we're gonna put them into the camera VLAN. So we'll click on the edit pencil and then under switch port profile, we're gonna specify it to be in the camera and then we'll press apply. We're gonna do that for all seven of these ports. All right, now all of those cameras are put into the correct VLAN. Typically what I do, just so they grab the right IP, I power cycle all of the cameras and you could do that on the right hand side by hitting this button here. Now all of the cameras are back online. Let's go to the client list and make sure they got the right IP. So on the left hand side, we could go to clients. And here we could see all seven cameras are in the 192.168.40 network, which is correct and it's the camera network. If you wanted to lock down these cameras even more, we could put them on a Mac allow list. So on port five, we could click the edit pencil. And then here under the Mac filter allow list, we could specify the Mac address of the camera. 
and then we could add that into the Mac allow list. So if we put in any other device into that port that isn't on the Mac allow list, it will shut the port completely off. Now let's go over to our Unify Protect. So I'll go to the left hand corner and then we'll click on Unify Protect. Here we don't see any devices right now and we only have a two terabyte hard drive in here. We will be upgrading that. So we'll go over to devices and then we'll add devices. Now we can see all seven cameras are showing up and I'll rename them when we get to the clients and we'll add devices. And you can see the link state is offline and that's most likely because these cameras are updating, which you can now see that they're updating. For now, there's not much else to do with these cameras as I'm gonna have to set up motion zones, privacy zones, smart detection zones when we get to the customer's house. But that is the base configuration I do before bringing all the gear to the clients. So now let's go back to our UDM Pro and do some firewall rules. Okay, so the first thing we need to do for our firewall rules, we're gonna be working under the LAN in and the LAN local. So we'll go to LAN in and the first rule we're gonna create is the established and related. And the action will be accept and then the state will be established and related and we'll press save. The next one will be the drop invalid state. So we'll create new rule, drop invalid state. And the action is gonna be dropped and the state is gonna be invalid and then we'll press save. Now we need to create a group and you guys have probably seen me do this before if you've seen my other small business videos. So we'll go over to groups, create new group and this is gonna be our RFC 1918. And this is just a request for comments. Um, it's a white paper for the, all the private IP addresses on the internet. You could search it up. It's pretty boring. Um, you might not want to read it all. And the first address we'll put is 192.168.0.0 slash 16. Then we're going to add 172.16.0.0 slash 12. And then we'll add 10.0.0.0 slash eight and press save. So the base rules that we're gonna apply, I'll end up applying more when we get to site, but we want to have the management be able to talk to all the VLANs. The staff needs to talk to the NAS that will be on the management LAN, which is 192.168.1.100. And then everything else should only have internet access and we shouldn't have inner VLAN routing. So the next rule we're gonna create is to allow management to all VLANs. And this action is gonna be to accept and the source network will be management and the destination will be that RFC 1918 group that we created and I'll press save. The next rule will be block inner VLAN routing and the action is gonna be drop and then here the source will be RFC 1918 to RFC 1918 and I'll press save. So our next rule, we need to allow the staff to be able to talk to the NAS on the management network at 192.168.1.100. We could create a group for the NAS and we could add the IP address of 192.168.1.100. If we ever added more network attached storage, we could add their IPs under here and we'll press save. Now we'll go back to the LAN in and we'll create new rule. This will be allow staff to NAS and the action will be accept. The source network is gonna be the staff and the destination IPv4 group will be our NAS group and we'll press save. Right now, how it stands, if we tried to hit the NAS, we wouldn't be able to because these firewall rules go in order from top down. We need to make sure that the allow staff NAS is above the block inner VLAN routing. So now our, all our inner VLAN routing is created, our allow staff to NAS is created. One thing that we need to do, we need to block out all the gateways from each other. So if we were sitting on the IoT network, we would still be able to get to the staff gateway, we'd still be able to get to the LAN gateway, and we'd be able to get to the guest gateway and we don't want that. We don't want anybody to get to our firewall. So we need to go ahead and create a group. And this first group we'll create will be drop guest to gateways. And we're gonna put in all the gateway IPs except its own IP. So we'll put in the 192.168.1.1, 192.168.10.1. The guest is on 20.1, so we'll skip that and go 192.168.30.1, 192.168.40.1. 192.168.50.1 and then we'll press save. So we need to do that for every single subnet and I'll just do a time lapse so you guys can see what I'm doing. Now all our gateway groups are created, we need to create a group for the individual IPs of the gateways. So first we'll do our camera gateway 
and that's 192.168.40.1 because if we were still if we were on the camera gateway we could still get to 192.168.40.1 and hit our firewall so we're going to have to block out http https and ssh so i'll press save and then we're going to do this for every other network and the last group we need to create will be a port group and this will be for http https and ssh so the ports will be 80 443 and 22 and i'll press save so now we've created our groups we need to create the firewall rules so we'll go back to rules ipv4 and then we need to go to LAN local here we're going to create a new rule and the first one and i'll only do one to show you guys and then i'll speed through this will be block camera to gateways the action will be to drop the source is going to be our network of cameras and the destination will be those new IPv4 groups we created. So the one will be drop cameras to gateways and then we'll press save. Now we need to drop cameras to HTTP so they can't reach the firewall interface. So we'll drop camera to HTTP. We'll go to network, select, and then we'll go cameras. And then the IPv4 address group will be the camera gateway, which will be the camera gateway IP of 192.168.40.1. And the port group will be that port group of HTTP, HTTPS, and SSH, and we'll press save. Then we need to do it for all of our other subnets. Another thing this customer has asked is to limit the bandwidth the guests get. So we could do that by going to user groups. We could create a new group and we could call this guest. And the bandwidth limit download will change to megabits per second and we're gonna give them 10 down and five up. And then we'll press save. Now we need to go back to our wireless networks and click on the guest network. We need to click advanced options and then scroll down to user groups. Here we're going to select that new user group we created, which was guest and press save. So that's pretty much it for the base setup I usually run through when I'm configuring a new client's network. If you guys have any questions about this video, please leave it below. If you guys like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.